Genshin Impact is going to have a upcoming card game mode in the brand new patch in just under a week. Now, a lot of you are probably not veteran card game player after all you started Genshin Impact because of, well, Genshin Impact, not because of the card game. And so that's okay, because in today's video, we're going to be going over five essential concepts that you need to know in order to succeed in the card game. And as always, if you're enjoying these type of video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. It really helped me out. And of course, as always, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about very, very essential card game concept that you should really understand if you want to win. Now, of course, if you're a noob and you don't want to win, that's fine. But these concepts are the same in every single card game. And I would expect these concepts to be really, really relevant when it comes down to the Genshin TCG as well. These are concepts including consistency, card advantage, using health as your resources, what is tempo, and what is value. So we're going to be covering those today, and we're going to go over each one of those word and what they really mean starting off with consistency in the card game there is a lot of rng involved because naturally a card game involves drawing card and the card you get might be one out of however many cards are in your deck in genshin impact there's 30 cards so the card that you get on your turn is going to be different every single time now of course you guys are dumbass genshin impact gacha game players so you guys are already familiar with rng which also means you're familiar with how rng can fuck you over so without that being said, making a consistent deck is really, really important so you don't get screwed over by RNG. There's still going to be element of RNG. You want to make sure to draw the card that you need and you want to make sure the card that you need is not at the bottom of your deck. So that is what consistency means is that you want to draft a deck that have high consistency regardless of your RNG. So how do you improve consistency? And that is what to draft card that is universally good and it's good in every single scenarios. There are always going to be card that we refer to as niche card or counter card which are a card that does something very particular against something and usually it's very powerful imagine there's a card that's like if your opponent is running a pyro characters do 10 damage that card is really powerful but it might not always always work because your opponent might not always be running a pyro characters so if your opponent is not running a pyro characters then your card is useless and so that card is not very consistent a more consistent card would be do a card that just do five damage obviously five damage is not as powerful as doing 10 damage but that card is a lot more consistent because it's a lot more generic and it can work against every single enemy no matter who the opponent play so that you're not screwed over if the opponent isn't playing into that very specific niche so that's the first thing the second thing to increase the consistency is obviously to build your deck around it which means to include card like card draw card or energy card because um, the Genji TCG has the concept of energy. Starting off with card draw, drawing card consistently is very important so that you can make sure to fetch up those important cards that you're looking for. Imagine you have a deck of 30 cards and the card that is really, really important is in the middle of the deck. So like somewhere within your 15 and 16 slot. You want to make sure to draw into that card. And in order to consistently do that, you have to include a lot of card draw into your deck. That's one of the reasons why card draw is one of the most important archetype when I come down to card game. It's because it consistently consistently allow you to fetch up those important cards that you need in order to win your game. In fact, one of these most common card archetypes is actually called Tutor Card. In pretty much every single game, there is something called Tutor Card, Excavating Card, or Search Card. These are cards essentially designed to specifically look for a very specific card to allow your deck to be more consistent. In this case, in Magic the Gathering, there's this card called Enlightened Tutor, which allows you to search your deck for a very specific artifact. If you ever watch Professional Turn, tournament, you will notice that they often play a tutor card very often. And a tutor card or excavate card in Yu-Gi-Oh, what they would do is they would pick up their deck, they would look for that very specific card they need, and then they would reshuffle it. And so that's what tutoring does. Those cards allow you to draw into the card you need much easier, and overall just make you a lot more consistent at drawing the card, and which overall make your deck a lot more consistent when it comes down to your battle. And so consistency is one of the very important things when it comes down to drafting your deck. With that being said, in Genshin Impact, TCG, there is also the concept of energy or energy dice. And this is another element of RNG because as you will notice from the trailers at the beginning of each round, you have to roll your energy. Because there's eight elements, even though you can re-roll, the chances of you getting the right element that you need is relatively low. So energy RNG is going to be another RNG that you have to play around to play to your consistencies, just like how drawing cards are important. And how do you do that? Often when it comes to games that involve energy, which are the case of like Pokemon. Pokemon have energy card. Magic the Gathering have land card, which are similar concept. There's also something called energy transfer.
transformer or energy stuff. There are going to be cards that interact with your energy. And generally speaking, they're something like plus one energy or convert one element to another. In fact, we can observe one of those in the trailers. Um, you can see that this card allows you to turn any one dice into a pyro energy. I guess they're called elemental tuner because they're called elemental tuning. So let's call them elemental tuning card. Elemental tuning card is going to be the second most important card that you draft into your deck because it's what allows you to get consistency. You want to make sure that you're not screwed over by a dice RNG when you need it. And so making sure you have enough elemental tuning card is going to be a very essential part of the Genshin Impact TCG deck drafting process. The most common mistake that beginner TCG player make is they don't think about how to make their deck consistent when they draft it. They draft cards that are like do 5 damage, do 10 damage because they're like, wow, these cards are really, really powerful. And they don't think about how can they actually play this card. Nevertheless, how to consistently get these cards out so that they can actually be useful in your battle. So that's the most common mistake that beginner card game player make, not drafting consistency. With that being said, let's move on to the second topic, which tied into what I just said, which is card advantage. So what is card advantage? Essentially, card advantage refers to your hand size. In this case, you have six cards versus the opponent three card. Because you have more card, you naturally have a bigger advantage. As the more card you have, the more option you have, and therefore potentially it gives you more response to what the opponent is doing, or just getting more option in general, depending on the tie of the battle. Card advantage is a classic example of why card like Part of Greed in Yu-Gi-Oh is so ridiculously overpowered. So why is Part of Greed so OP? It's because this card gives you plus one hand advantage for free. You play Part of Greed, which costs you one card, and then you draw two cards, which replenish the one card that you spend, plus another additional card. Card. So this card basically just give your hand another card for free. And it's why it's the most ridiculously overpowered card in the history of card games. Not just Yu-Gi-Oh! A different example that is also just as powerful is um, Graceful Charity. Graceful Charity is neutral card advantage because if you don't know what it does, Graceful Charity draw you free card and then you discard two card. Combine it with the card that you spend, which is Graceful Charity itself, you essentially come up on neutral hand advantage because you don't lose any card, you plus zero. While you don't lose any card, they allow you to what we call cycling. Because what happened when you play Graceful Charity is that you draw free card and then you discard the worst two card in your hand. So essentially, it just upgrade your hand into better card for free. Because again, it costs you no hand size. It's a plus zero neutral card advantage card. And so that's why this card is ridiculously overpowered because of that. So card advantage is another really, really important aspect when it comes to card games and making sure that you have a lot of card in your hand is going to be another key for you to defeat your opponent or key to victory. And again, that's the reason why drafting card draw card into your deck is really important because it allows you to have a better consistency and allows you to have better card advantage. Next concept, which is using your health as a resources. When it comes down to a card game, the most important thing are resources. Your hand size that we talked about, like card advantage, is resources. Your board, in this case, what characters you have, what summon you have are also resources and so is your health. Health is an available resources for you to change the tie of the battle and you should use it carefully to make sure that you're in a better position. Now the reason why most people fail to do this is because health is also the condition you need to win or lose and so most people are afraid of losing HP because when you lose HP you think that you are losing. While that is true it is important to recognize when to trade your health for resources whether that be more cards, better tempos, better value, or whatever. A classic example would be a pretty common card game called Hearthstone. In Hearthstone, there are class, and there is a class called Warlock. Warlock have this hero power called Life Tap, and it essentially allows you to draw a card, but you take two damage in return, which of course potentially put you in a better position than your opponent because you have plus one card, which means you have potentially better hand advantage, which is what we just talked about. So it's important to recognize that health is a valuable resources as well that you can trade for to get into a better position than your opponent. And the most classic mistakes that new player make is that whenever their HP go down, they are fear of losing, and so they don't respect using their health as a resources. Next concept, what is the two most important concept when it comes to card game? And they are tempo and value. Tempo refer to the pace of your playing 
the tide of the battle, your momentum, where value refer to how much value you can generate through a single card or how much gas you can replenish off each card. These two concepts are kind of difficult to explain, so they are difficult to grasp, but they are really, really important. So let's look at an example, which is, let's refer to a Hearthstone. The card on the left is called Fireball, and it do six damage for four mana. The card on the right is called Fire Land Portal. It costs seven mana, but it only do five damage. But it also summon you a minions. And the question is, which card is better? The answer is, there's no answers. Yes, and because these two cards are looking at different things. Fireball is a card with better tempo because it's a faster card. It costs lower mana and it do more damage. When you pay this card, you can immediately do six damage and potentially gain a lot of momentum or tempo. However, the card on the right, Fireland Portal, have more value and in the long run, will outvalue the Fireball card and put you in a better position. And the keyword here is in the long run. When you first play this card, it might not be as good or as tempo-y because you're paying a higher mana cost to do less damage. But this card generates you additional value by also summoning you a minions, which you can then use to do something later. Coming down to Genshin Impact, values and tempo, just like every card game, will be a really, really important concept. In fact, a example of values will be your summon. There are many, many characters that can summon things in Genshin Impact, and they will be in the TCG as well. Those are things like Fischl, who can summon Oz, or Xiangli, who can summon Goba. So imagine on one hand, you have a card that just do four damage to your opponent immediately. This card can generate a lot of tempo, but as soon as you play this card, it's done. It doesn't generate a lot of values. However, on the other hand, Imagine you have Xiang Link who can summon Goba. Now, unlike this card on the left, Goba only do two damage. So it's half of this card on the left. But Goba can do that every single turn rather than only once. So what will happen is that Goba will do two damage the first turn and then it will do four damage the second turn. Well, in total, four damage. It will do another two damage the second turn. So four damage in total. And then it will do another two damage the first turn and therefore you total up to six damage. In this case, you can see how Goba outvalue the card on the left because for the same cost one of these in end up doing six damage and the other one only end up doing four damage however Goba has to do it across three turn it takes two turn to break even with the card on the left because it takes two turn to do four damage and it take three turn to out values the card on the left and so Goba generate more value but at a slower pace so this card has lower tempo but more values it's really important that you balance your tempo and your values to one maintain momentum but to generate enough values so that you don't run out of gas because running out of gas essentially means you stop and no matter how much tempo you have your goal has to be to defeat the opponent so if you run out of gas before you beat the opponent it doesn't really matter how much damage you're doing before that you're gonna lose so how would the card on the left be better than the card on the right which is goba imagine you summon goba which only to two damage and then it die you your opponent play a card and respawn to kill it in one turn so all it did was two damage in this case the Goba card didn't really generate that much value because it died immediately before it is able to get a second cast off. So it only did 2 damage, which is not as good as the card on the left, which is 4 damage. So in this case, we call this card on the left out tempoing your opponent because you're essentially just playing card faster. A potential example in Genshin Impact is something like artifact card or direct damage card. Looking at this Yomiya, we know that she equipped an artifact, the Crimson Witch of Flame, because it was shown in the trailers, which potentially empower her to do more damage. But the turn you play this artifact it doesn't really do anything it will have an impact next turn potentially the turn after and the turn after and after and after but it doesn't have an impact this turn so you lose tempo but you gain value for all your turn after now how do you respond to that easy just kill yomi right now before they're able to take advantage of the artifact so imagine your opponent play artifact on yomi and then you're like okay you want to use your mirror to attack me i'm gonna cast my deluke elemental burst right now and kill your Yomiya. In that case, they don't get to take advantage of the artifact that they equip, and so you out-tempo your opponent by denying their momentum. At the same time, you want to make sure you are generating enough values so that you don't run out of gas. So a potential solution would be you play one of these weapons on your Kaya, and you make sure your Kaya doesn't die so that your Kaya can continuously generate values through this weapon equip card. So those are value and tempo. They are really, really hard concept to explain on papers, and it's something you just have to play the game to understand. But at the very least, I hope this gives light to some of the very basic concept coming into a card game for your first time to know how to put your 
yourself into a better board position and therefore just win game more often. So how exactly would the Genshin Impact card game go? We don't really know yet. It'll be coming out really, really soon. I'll be doing a lot of videos on this. I'm super excited. As you can tell, I'm an expert in card game. So we're going to be doing a lot of TC. And if you do want to challenge me, you can come over to my stream. I'm going to make something so that my viewer can challenge me in battle. And I swear to God, I'll destroy all of you dumbasses. So yeah, get fucked to chat. But anyway, okay. I'll see you guys next time, okay? So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. YouTube Frog. And um, challenge me, you dumbass.